points. It was also the implementation of intervention and costing. Each intervention it corresponds to its own level in the National Plan of 2012-2014. For example, we have uh, established crisis centers in each province on a municipal level. All of the models, uh, the, all of the models for understanding for the public uh, the, on a national level. The description of our experience, who are our partners in our work. As I mentioned earlier, the national organ in the first uh, was the Ministry of uh, Youth uh, to, uh, to develop occupation for youth and the Ministry of uh, Social Development. And the Ministry of Youth began uh, implementing actions uh, of policies in 2012-2014 in order to be able to convert this plan of action into an instrument that would work in order to be able to attain gender equality. Besides that, the Finance Ministry, which was one of our uh, great uh, partners was taken to uh, put uh, together the specific questions that needed to be addressed as far as the processes. Uh, financing and in order to be able to make the costing system of that plan. And besides that, our, uh, part, our main partners are UN Women. We have received uh, financing from an uh, expert group. And we have been able to attain support, technical support, coordination uh, of consulting with the national uh, partners. Uh, they're experts in, in gender equality and financing and in other sectors. Uh, the, the people that are responsible for gender-specific issues are the employees and they also the representatives and uh, chiefs of uh, strategic directions, uh, strategic planning and financial planning, which are key uh, roles to the ministries and particularly of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Science, to the Social Development Ministry of uh, the Interior, Ministry of, uh, and others. And I would like to call your attention in uh, your agenda to other programs, other uh, state programs that we have developed Another strategy in order to be able to create gender equality up until 2015 has uh, three stages. The first stage in 2012 to 2014, the second stage would be 2015 to 2017, and the third stage, 2017 to 2020. Those stages consist in, in programs, sectorial programs uh, of ministries, and there's also a municipal uh, regional and municipal plans, and besides our national agenda of gender equality in 2000, as part of a general strategy for the development of the country and the development programs. And I would like to show you uh, uh, an umbrella architecture of the plan, which has three, uh, five priorities. The elimination of discrimination, 
and expansion of economic possibilities, the development of education, and gender equality, and the acceptance of decision, the, the regulation. And of those priorities, we have goals which become tasks. And there are 50 tasks. And we have uh, 16 uh, different measures that are being, being implemented. We have uh, methodologies of costing methodologies. We have uh, forms to calculate the measures. We have uh, of how it can be calculated and the costing for the costing. Uh, the priorities and costing for the plan, which takes into consideration the formula according to the tasks. And the principle, the umbrella principle of the costing. Uh, These are of uh, priorities to be able to think priorities. The information the list of prices. For example, uh, the salaries of the system workings of the public officials, general and public officials of the salaries of the international consultants, expenditures for education, field investigation services, information and continuous information, expenditures as far as transportation, and for also travel expenses. Here we can see the budget according to the authorities. For example, for in order to be able to extend the economic possibilities in 20% for the development of 25%. Uh, for elimination of discrimination, uh, 37 percent. To gender equality, 3 uh, percent. Policies for regulation, 3 percent. And I know that you're going to ask why why we have destined for gender equality only 3%, and we can say that we, in the policy in the parliament, and there exists and there represent many, there's many women that also work in the industry. There's women that work as directors, and that is why we have decided that the money, distribute the money for other actions that require more attention. What are the factors that allow the, these actions? For example, there is a legislation uh, in a series of uh, laws 
that allow gender equality up until 2012, a national action plan 2012-2014, along with a matrix of you know, And besides that, of uh, gender policies of the national uh, program and uh, resources from the national budget. And that uh, gender department, which was the ministry of uh, up until 2012, is now part of the Ministry of uh, Social Defense. And uh, besides that, the first uh, doc extensive uh, document where we take gender equality and with a new and closing uh, multi sector approach and a strategy that is carried out. There are three levels up until the costing, the station. It was presented to, uh, to our development in a coordination with uh, of the development with uh, the participation of donors in July of 2013. It uh, was presented uh, a sectorial which contained information regarding that policy uh, about uh, costing policies to the care uh, to carry out and, and uh, financial problems. By the same token, that same methodology and costing uh, the, the government program of Kitisha to pass to the development of 2014 2016. And we hoped to have an approval by the the Congress or the Parliament. What were the obstacles uh, and lessons learned? First of all, we had uh, there's a lack of uh, previous. We didn't really have a previous experience, a costing experience. There was a lack. Uh, a uh, lack of methodologies las dificultades de la elaboración de Another challenge is the lack of relation with the process, the budget, uh, national budget process. And that uh, at that moment, the national is based on the principle, uh, linear principle, and they have a classification of classifications in the budget. <coughs> that is to say, uh, uh, managerial, financial, and functional. And the uh, decision strategy and that reforms the system of directions, uh, uh, which is uh, oriented towards that goal. There is a lack of understanding of, uh, of the gender policy. 
we uh, believe that the gender policy to this uh, social, but this is not so. The strategic decision is this uh, interdepartmental and the strengthening of the mechanism institutional. And this is an organ, which is an executive organ of gender policy. And the next, according to the investigations, the costing, and the costing of the National Action Plan uh, has, uh, we're lacking uh, financing, and we're standing at basically the 88.9%. The kind of uh, uh, national budget is uh, uh, the salaries of the public officials that are involved in the action plan. Up until uh, some time ago, these were not identified of additional for the uh, financing. They were not identified, support was not uh, identified on behalf of the international organizers. And, and to also uh, cause us, is a cause for concern. But thanks to UN Women, we have been able to achieve with joint efforts, and I suppose to be able to resolve uh, in some way the execution of that plan. There are there are two types. The, 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 there's a division and this mission of the problems in the problems and the financial measures, including including and the sources outside of the budget including uh, donors between uh, international donors which traditionally work with us uh, that are gender sensitive thank you very much uh, thank you mr Eric. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you for presenting us such an extensive uh, methodology and the findings of the costing exercise in Kyrgyz Republic. I think uh, we should discuss now, and the floor is open for the discussion. Uh, thank you very much. It's very, very interesting. I'm very excited to see how Kyrgyzstan has uh, taken this up. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, from the perspective also of the, of the financial authorities in your country, how has this uh, experience uh, actually helped uh, the government to think about costing it more generally, because I think that this, uh, you know, these costing experiences, what I'm, I'm getting is that they're very innovative uh, in the countries, especially in this, uh, one of the last slides where you say that uh, in Kyrgyzstan you still have a very traditional type of, of, of budgeting, which is the line budgeting uh, by, <clears throat> Uh, and using uh, very general uh, 
um, and more um, traditional types of of, uh, of, co of budgeting. So that, that that's more uh, a general question. And my second question would be, uh, what are your plans to uh, to track that the money that you have now identified in the budget actually gets spent, and then you can also measure impact? Thank you. Shall we take a few more questions and then respond or you want to respond now? Maybe okay. these are the questions. Yeah, it's related to the first one. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I have seen the, in your PowerPoint the long and medium term action plan uh, aggregated to different goals related to the, focused on the gender equality. But the budget system of your country is line item budgeting. How do you measure the impact of the result? This action plan to related to the budget because the line item budgeting is focused on the cost, not the result oriented. But when it comes to the program budget, it's focused on result oriented. How do you measure the results of that action plan to relate to the budget one? Thank you. Our, our budget was calculated in accordance to, in an old-fashioned way, but our ministry's department is working on, uh, on changing this format. The finance ministry is uh, now looking at including that part of financing in its budget. And our, uh, our public has difficulties, but up until now, we have, uh, we have money which can be spent uh, for our uh, public employees that uh, work in, in the gender area. We're basically talking about those salaries. But for other goals, we would not really be able to, uh, there, there's no money. Uh, for, for those goals, for, uh, we are looking for reliable uh, sources and budgeting. I would like to clarify something for the triple traduction. There are some significant Government, considering that the, there is a line budget system now, yeah? how it is costing help the, to the government. So I would like to say that uh, uh, um, after we carried out this costing exercise, so uh, the, uh, the, the term itself, the definition of costing itself was uh, really welcomed in the government and everybody started thinking about the program budget, result-oriented budget, because this conservative structure of state budget didn't allow actually to plan and, and uh, to carry activities uh, uh, based on uh, gender, uh, gender responsive uh, principles and human rights based approach. 
Um, but uh, currently, uh, um, uh, despite efforts, uh, uh, many efforts undertaken to implement, uh, to introduce, first of all, introduce and then implement this program budget, result-oriented budget, this is still on the very early stage. So we're just beginning uh, uh, in the ministries this work. So it's at the very early stage. And we have a lot of challenges in this way because ministries sometimes they uh, find it difficult to understand what is result-oriented budget because for many, many years, uh, so um, um, the state budget was formulated in line item budgeting, yeah? So that's why it is really challenging, but it's slowly, slowly, it's, it's being introduced. So for example, last year we had um, uh, eight program bu uh, budgets developed. Um, by different ministries. Uh, but this year, uh, we have 20 program budgets developed. But of course, the quality of program budgets, the um, how to say, um, it's, it's different, yeah? It's um, some are better, some are worse, because uh, as I yesterday mentioned, we had uh, a lot of challenges in actually uh, planning, um, uh, result, uh, planning the programs uh, based on the results based uh, approaches, yeah? So that's why we have difficulties with introducing uh, proper indicators to assess the impact. So that's why uh, on your question on regarding how we would really um, uh, assess impact, so I think that maybe at this stage for us it is um, difficult to say that we would measure uh, the impact. But uh, this costing exercise, as I yesterday mentioned, was um, uh, its limitations, they're linked actually to the limitations of uh, state budget formation. Because we had this national action plan, which was formulated, let's say, on a mixed approach, yeah, result-oriented and also on the traditional, uh, tradi in traditional way. So on some uh, uh, objectives, on some goals and tasks, we have indicators uh, against which we can measure the impact. But uh, in some cases, so we don't have indicators uh, to assess uh, uh, the impact of this uh, gender policies. So uh, um, in brief, so I can say that it is, um, it is on early stage. So we are working on the improvement of this process, but it is already started and we consider this, this is as a big uh, success. That the ministries, they're changing their mentality, their mind, so that they can uh, use different approaches to develop uh, the program budgeting um, rather than using this traditional um, line budget. But uh, this is really a big challenge because even these ministries, yeah, we have some strategic programs developed, uh, even ministries, they develop uh, program budgets, they still use parallel um, budget which is based on line item uh, approach. And this is a problem because they try to do this, but methodologically it's dif difficult. That's why they have this parallel two budgets. And uh, the problem is that uh, usually this line budget, uh, line budget is implemented rather than program budget. But uh, this, uh, to change the situation, it requires a lot of efforts, a lot of advocacy, lobbying. Uh, but uh, this is a very long term and gradual process. So we can't just change in a moment. Uh, thank you. Le let's take another few rounds of questions. Uh, maybe uh, here from uh, start from here and then you. Okay. Uh, bonjour. Uh, je voudrais d'abord uh, remercier le présentateur. Et je pense qu'on a beaucoup appris du modèle du Kyrgyzstan. Donc j'ai trois questions. Ma première question, si j'ai l'impression que c'est un long processus, combien de temps ça a pris pour aboutir à ce processus? Et je vois également un modèle mathématique qui a été développé. Je vois qu'il y a un groupe d'experts qui était impliqué, mais est-ce que vous avez impliqué l'université dans ce modèle? Et comment... how does sectorial ministries, how do they participate in the elaboration of this uh, formula, uh, which uh, serves as a, as a baseline? On the other hand, I also saw that there's an absence of appropriations 
on behalf of the sectorial ministries, because when you say that the other ministries do not did not understand the multi-sectorial approach of this uh, methodology uh, system, costing system. How were they able to? How were they? How is awareness created? And the last comment that I would have has to do with the results that were obtained. I believe that uh, they are uh, pretty weak when you say that 89 percent. Uh, 0.9 uh, I, uh, it was not uh, financed, I believe, that I think it's something that's uh, very nice, but uh, it still faces challenges and difficulties. And when I look at the structure of the budget for Kyrgyzstan, which continues to be a traditional budget, when I look at the model that is uh, very well drawn out, uh, uh, replicating the example of the methodology that is used towards actions, as long as you don't have budgets that are oriented to, towards results, it'll be very difficult to carry out the costing exercise. Those would be my comments regarding the presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, I also want to congratulate the Antes que nada quisiera felicitar la presentación de por la experiencia y también felicitar I have two questions. One is regarding the the possibility of looking for funds for that 93% that is missing. Uh, beyond going to to the, you know, to the international donors, etc. Is there any open opportunity for the government to go into a fiscal reform, open up fiscal space to get more revenue from the government side? And my other question uh, is uh, regarding the, also the, the way to go through the calculation uh, you have a pricing list and you have an amount, but I didn't understand very well in the presentation how do you get to the amount needed to apply that pricing list? How do you, how do you get to the figure of you need uh, three, I don't know, three workshops or four people or whatever? If you can complement a little bit more on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your questions. Uh, first of all, uh, on your question uh, regarding the involvement of um, uh, different line ministries, uh, sectoral ministries. Um, yeah, perhaps uh, in the presentation, so we had a very little space to capture everything, but uh, as I mentioned yesterday, it was really a consultative process. So in each ministry in Kyrgyzstan, we have gender focal points, people who are responsible um, on gender issues. Sometimes it is uh, very formal and nominal. It depends on the approach taken by the leadership in the ministries. In some ministries, this gender focal point is really very active, really uh, um, uh, committed, and they participate in various working groups and discussions. Um, so we, in the process of um, designing this costing exercise, we involved all those uh, gender focal points from the ministries, along with gender experts who are sometimes academicians, sometimes uh, practitioners, gender expert. One of these well-known experts is uh, with us today, it's Anara Niyazova, but we have also other gender experts uh, well-known in the country and working in gender field for many, many years. Um, so we involved, yes, in this sense, we involved uh, academics as well and there were also practitioner gender experts. Um, uh, regarding who carried, uh, physically, who carried out this uh, methodology yeah, and uh, the study itself, this was a group of experts, uh, led by Lyubov um, uh, Ten. She, is, um, she has um, um, a lot of experience in the government, in the public sector, but currently she is uh, working as an advisor to the Minister of Economics, and she has experience in... Um, uh, uh, she, she is not gender expert, but she, she is gender sensitized by, involved, uh, by involving uh, in different training and uh, in uh, gender uh, awareness training uh, by uh, UN women, previously by UNIFEM. 
So in that sense, so she knows what is gender, and so she uh, tried to apply it, um, the available, um, let's say, uh, approaches, theoretical approaches to calculate the formula. Um, so uh, for this question, did I answer your question? Yeah, for, for, for the involvement of ministries. But when I say that it is still some ministries do not understand what is uh, program budget, the problem exists still because, as you know, that sometimes we train uh, um, several people from the ministry, yeah, from one ministry, uh, and because uh, uh, people change in the ministry, sometimes sometimes the leadership changes. So this is all, uh, you know, creates additional challenges. So we cannot train the whole ministry, but uh, um, the department. Uh, but we try, of course, to involve as much uh, people as possible. Um, regarding the financial gap yeah, in the calculating uh, the cost of the national program, you are absolutely right. Uh, this costing exercise showed that actually we had a very ambitious uh, national action plan for gender equality. Because as you can see from uh, the presentation, so the financial program is 90 percent and yes you are right that this is our biggest concern actually that this national action plan will not be implemented fully and we understand that uh, to uh, to be more or less sustainable it requires at least 50 percent of funding but this is a problem because um, the state budget is really constrained we have limitations of state budget in Kyrgyzstan this is eight develop eight dependent country lesser developed country um, uh, so that's why it's, yeah, it's a re real big challenge. But um, you are, uh, as Raquel said also, yes, this is, um, we understand this concern and uh, the, uh, we are looking also, yes, at the possibilities how we can reduce this gap by looking at uh, donor funding also, but also maybe doing some fiscal reforms in the country as well. And um, uh, the possibility of government getting more revenues and then using it later on, it also exists and the government is really has good will, political will to, to use it. And uh, uh, the thing that even this 10% that were committed, yeah, as the salaries of um, people who are responsible for gender policies, it's even it's a huge step forward because never before we had uh, uh, the case that the government you know, put it as a, you know, explicitly as a, that 10% uh, uh, for, you know, this gender focal points or gender responsible people. So it's a f step forward, of course, but we, uh, it's a long way to go, really, yes. So we understand this, and, um, but uh, the usefulness of this costing exercise is also uh, in that, that this costing exercise showed that we, are, we were probably too ambitious in um, uh, designing all these priorities and national action implementation plan. That's why uh, Mr. Deputy Minister mentioned that um, one of the uh, recommendations or one of the conclusions or lessons learned is that we need to really review probably the national action plan and identify the, the, um, the most acute priorities that would require you know, state resources and also uh, we can mobilize some resources for their implementation. Uh, ah, yes, it's, uh, there was a question on, on the price list, yeah? Um, uh, yes, um, the price list was developed basically uh, by uh, expert, um, expert discussions. So you are absolutely right. We had several consultative discussions where we involved uh, specialists from the Ministry of Finance because they know, for example, how much, uh, uh, you know, cost, uh, you know, for example, the cost of human um, resources in different ministries or in the municipalities, for example, and we involved other specialists from different ministries and also experts, economic experts, financial gender experts who know the market value of some resources like premises or some services. So th this is the way how we developed the price list and it was um, um, discussed and agreed actually before uh, the team uh, the expert team who carried the costing, they actually calculated all the costs. So it was an estimation by different experts of how much time it required, for example, to establish a um, crisis center in uh, all provinces or uh, how much time it will require, for example, to do uh, public announcements, to raise agenda, uh, to raise awareness of the population about the violence against women, etc., etc. So. 
thank you. I think uh, Yamini has raised a uh, uh, hand. Maybe she has some comment. Mm -hmm. Very brief. Then we'll go for our next presentation. Just Hello. one very quick comment, and I'm very intrigued by what you presented because uh, you also put a figure to uh, to a head called eradication of discrimination. And I'm wondering how it would be possible to do something like that, because something like eradication of discrimination, one would be cutting across all sectors, agriculture, industry, labor, not just about setting up crisis centers for women. And two, it's also about how you define discrimination. If you define it in the CEDO sense of substantive equality, then as you said, it's as much then the costs uh, get transferred from government's policies or costs from the government domain to cost that we have to incur within households, as you said, for awareness generation, for to address cultural biases, etc. So I'm just wondering what a huge exercise it would have been to put a figure to something like eradication of discrimination. Uh, thank you, Yamini. With this uh, huge presentation, you have put another huge questions. Maybe it is very difficult to uh, answer uh, for the presenter. You want to say something? Just a quick comment, yeah. Uh, so let me clarify. Uh, in this costing exercise, we didn't uh, assess uh, how it would cost to uh, eliminate discrimination against women, yeah. So we, I mean, it's impossible. So what we costed, we costed uh, certain actions, certain interventions in this field because in the uh, you saw this umbrella architecture, yeah. So in this, we have priority areas and elimination of discrimination against women in all fields. Um, so it's included as a priority, but in the national action plan, there are only certain activi uh, certain actions to be taken in the 2000 in 2012, 2014, and these actions they, they were costed actually, but we didn't try really cost the impact or we didn't try to cost uh, you know because I mean it's impossible. Uh, thank you very much for the Kyrgyz presentation and clarifications. Now we'll have a Honduras presentation. From Cameron Torres. Cameron Torres, sorry. Uh, good morning to all of you. For me, it is a pleasure to be here sharing this experience. Thank you to the organizers of this event. In order to be able to, to be here for the invitation that I have received to share and also know the experiences of other countries, which will help us to strengthen the processes that we are beginning in our country. Uh, following the framework of the presentation, we're going to begin with the stakeholders involved which participated in the process of the costing process of the second plan for gender equality in Honduras 2010-2020, which was our public policy in order to be able to attain women's advancement and progress in Honduras. First of all, the National Institute, Women's Institute as the national mechanism for the advancement of women, uh, which is an institute, a state institution, which was created in uh, 2000, uh, eight uh, that begins in 1998 it was founded 1999 begins operating we also have the foreign plan with a plan which is born in 2009 according to the legislation for the establishment of a country and adopting the as a, as a country plan which takes care of planning in the process of planning in our country and the uh, financing as the the finance minister of uh, the fiscal that uh, from the year 2000. Uh, UN Women with its technical and financial support, which has been relevant in this whole process, uh, that is in charge of uh, being able to the gender equality and empowerment of women in all of the countries. So these were the actors that we articulated and began this process of what was the costing of the second plan and also the the budget sensitive uh, the budget that were gender sensitive along its uh, uh, duties it has to plan uh, to promote the 
budget sensitive, uh, that are gender budgets that are gender sensitive and incorporates the costing of our second plan. A little bit of the political context, social and economic context. We have in the first uh, line, Honduras has moved forward in so far as the women's rights. We have an extensive uh, judicial framework to be able to, to allow us to guarantee human rights uh, from women. We have uh, an equal opportunity for women that was decreed in the year 2000. And the National Women's Institute as such. We also have within the institutes of the National Women's Institute, which are one of their primary functions, is to formulate and promote and, uh, and address the national women's policies and its action plans. In that regard, currently we have our uh, gender equality uh, program, which has six strategic uh, main lines in the areas of greater problems in our country. We have 50 uh, policies, 209 strategic objectives, 30 indicators to measure the following of the advancement of each one of the main axes of to fulfill the, the, the legal uh, uh, highlights and also a budget to be able to have the second plan be a reality and to be positioned and assumed by all of the institutions of the state as such of the execution of the actions that are implicit in the aforementioned plan. We have the CEDAW as an international convention, which uh, promotes or uh, invites all of the countries to end all kinds of discrimination against women and to carry specific actions regarding this issue. We also have uh, the, uh, the country vision uh, legislation, which is 2010-2038, and the country plan for 2010-2022, which is the f planning framework that uh, is addressed in our country, which is managed by the Technical Secretary uh, for Cooperation, uh, the Technical for Planning and, cooperation and External Cooperation. This uh, vision uh, view has uh, guidelines uh, with strategic guidelines. We, we, it has uh, four uh, established uh, national goals, 23 uh, priorities, and it has uh, strategic guidelines, and it has 71 indicators. Within the, uh, uh, the guiding principles, we have gender equality as, as a trans uh, cross-section uh, access in the, the for the, in the, the to advance in the development of the country and to eliminate poverty and we have the Beijing platform which uh, the action plan with which we have to consolidate the actions that all the countries have to carry out in different areas in order to be able to move forward and be able to make an advance of women in the elimination of discrimination and also contemplates the strategy of transferization of gender where all of the countries have the responsibility of attaining in the incorporation of uh, gender equality in all of its institutions, its public policies translated into projects, programs, and uh, specific actions for the benefit against uh, in the discrimination against women. Regarding the political and uh, social and economic context, we stem from a, a framework that which was signed that was uh, signed by the president of Honduras to uh, provide an alignment to the uh, national action plan. And the second peak, where we had the participation of the secretary secretariat of the ONU plan and the UN Women. This is an agreement that allows us to articulate uh, specific actions with the main. Uh, uh, institutions to uh, promote this project. We also have, we made a, a study of her incidents. We created a gender analysis of the, of the planning process and uh, budgeting and the information system that was generated in institutions regarding the national budget uh, in Honduras. It was necessary to make this analysis in order to be able to establish the conditions that we had in our budget system to be able to attain, incorporate uh, actions, and to be able to do the costing. Honduras has a system, administration system, 
uh, has a financial administration system, which is the CIAFI, which is managed by the, the uh, finance secretary, which is uh, based on re result based. We also have our, our planning system. So we have uh, this analysis that was important, uh, gender analysis, and throughout the whole process of planification. We had the uh, ticketed uh, for gender equality of uh, expenditures of the Honduran Republic. And from that costing, 1.03 is uh, the destined to equality, of which 0 0.02 is the National Institute for Women, which is basically a minimal amount which is destined towards a gender equality in our national budget. We also had a critical route to uh, uh, address the gender problems in institutional from the sec Secretariat of Honduras and an action plan in order to turn it into an operational plan. Within the strategy of the critical route, we define the importance of articulating actions to promote uh, public budgeting with a gender perspective when they were being uh, created. How do we articulate actions with different, with primarily with the main institutions and with all of those institutions that are responsible uh, for implementing the action of the second plans. The strengthening of capacities is another strategy that is necessary to be able to attain so that all of the uh, state and public employees can be able to really manage gender policies, particularly those people that are involved in the planning and budgeting of the public policies. The creation of instruments for institutionalization of the gender perspective is another important element because many institutions, and they say, how are we going to, how will we be able to attain the pers gender perspective in our day to day uh, operations, institutional operations? It's important to create instruments for this uh, issue. As a matter of fact, as a UN Women, we have created for the local level a manual of uh, budgeting that is gender sensitive. And we have also edited a folder containing information regarding the uh, working of public institutions and also for the Congress and for the ministers in order to be able to strengthen the capacities in all of the themes that have to do with budgeting that is gender sensitive. The positioning of the political and technical aspects, we need to be able to position this uh, issue in what refers to national in the National Congress as per se in the uh, ministries, uh, the ministries also have to take empowerment of, of this issue and be aware of the importance of being able to incorporate, that it's necessary to incorporate the uh, gender perspective throughout uh, the whole institutional uh, structure of the government to also involve congressmen and women that are already s been, uh, uh, created awareness so they can have incidents in the elaboration of a budget that incorporates specific actions uh, into the budget that uh, allow us to move forward in creating gender equality to promote the articulation with the civil society, which is necessary, which we have to promote, we have to undertake once again, since due to the political crisis of 2009, the civil society, and particularly the women from uh, feminist organizations have separated from the National Institute of Women, and we haven't been able to articulate actions that they're an important element in the incidents and in the proposals that can be presented to the government to be able to advance, make headway in this regard. And the last strategy is the important to being uh, following up on the t uh, targeted uh, research for women and for and children and equality, how to give a follow up in all of the processes that are generated regarding the, the budget costing and the implementation of public policies. The objective of the costing. This uh, costing exercise is part of the necessity to establish actions necessary by the uh, state uh, secretary in regards to equality and to define new actions based on the second program of the gender equality. Our second plan contains the uh, responsible institutions for uh, making sure that the strategic objectives are met. And the objective is to value financially the goods and services that government is uh, 
uh, investing in its uh, gender equality through its policies, programs, projects, and activities, and that they have as a purpose to close the gaps of inequality according to what is established in this public policy of the second plan for equal opportunity. When we decided to uh, establish the costing program, we defined that we're going to do the costing by uh, the access of rights with each one of the linked uh, institutions that have their as their duty to comply and fulfill those actions, valuing the interventions that are incorporated in their each uh, yearly operational plan in 2012. We took as a reference uh, 2012, so we took the budget from 2012 as our reference point. And also the costing of possible interventions to be executed by each institution on a base on, on each uh, access right. Each of the actions that were not being carried out that the government was not carrying forward, but had to involve and incorporate in their planning, operational planning. Within the uh, institutions that participated, there were 35 institutions from the central government linked to each one of the rights, incorporating that all of those key people, such as the people in charge of planning, the administrative uh, management, the uh, main management uh, and budgeting offices in each one of the uh, offices, we would have those uh, offices that, according to the equal opportunity legislation, all of the states and governmental institutions have to have a gender unit. And on a municipal level, where well, we have the municipal offices for the women that are dependent uh, on the municipalities. Here I show you. And here we have our second equality plan and equity, uh, Honduras. There are six uh, main uh, guidelines. The first uh, is linked to the, pr the promotion and guarantee of so social and political participation of the exercise of uh, citizenship by women. The second is the protection, promotion, and guarantee of the rights of women children and teenagers to a life that is free of violence. The third is established through the guaranteeing the safety of, uh, of throughout their ho and health of the women, their sexual and reproductive rights. The fourth axis guarantees the rights to education, the cultural and intercultural rights, and the right to information. Uh, access number five, protection and guarantee of uh, financial rights, work and employment, to have an access and control to their resources. And access number six, it's a new access in the 2012, 2007, it was incorporated regarding gender, the sustainable use and control of the biodiversity of the natural resource and risk management. Since our country is a country that is very vulnerable to the effects of climate change, uh, of uh, natural resources. Uh, it's an issue that is being managed on the level of all countries, and it's important the participation of women in all of these processes. As we can see in this scheme, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there was a mapping that was carried out of all of the institutions in each one of the examples of the rights. Here's an example of the institutions. The, of the linking institutions. Uh, very quickly, because I only have five more minutes, the experiences of costing, the process to be able to define the interventions to be costed, the, the budgeting, the norms, the time, the time guidelines, the institutions are responsible to uh, There was a budget costing that towards gender perspective, which gave us the steps to follow to be able to do that costing. The mapping of the institutions, of the primary uh, institutions, the planning the strategic relationship in the second step of the institution of the, de the dependent, the classificator of the function of each one of the institutions. And we were able to attain it through CTR where we made a workshop for each uh, one of the rights. We took it one day for each workshop with the insti linking institutions with that uh, right to right, the participating rights I had already mentioned to you earlier. Uh, it was led by the National Gender Mechanism, NAM, and 
with the technical and the support of UN Women. On behalf of the, the responsible, all of those actors that played a role that I already mentioned earlier. The costing process, uh, the technical process, it took us uh, in three steps. It took uh, six steps. The first one to uh, establish with the dependencies. The second step, the application of the function of the to see the competency of each institution. And three, according to this institution, the uh, actions that needed to be taken or had to be costed out for each institution and relating them to the uh, exit rights, the development of specific actions, the assignation of resources, that is to say, how are we going to use those resources and according to the objective of the budget expenditure, personal services, uh, supplies, etc. And uh, the definition of the impact that we created in the gender analysis that were related to what the government wanted to reach in equal equality gender and to uh, how to obtain those results and also how to, to know if we were going to be having success in being able to attain the execution uh, of those results. And the information that uh, we used The information that is used was the second uh, federal equality and gender, and the uh, budgeting classifications, the national operate, the yearly operational plans of all the institutions that participated in the same by the same token. The national framework and the the process of uh, planning and budgeting, we made the harmonization of the second part within the framework of uh, planning and, and budgeting, the legislation and uh, budgeting. In this regard, we made a proposal to be able to modify the general, but for the budget, but for this year. It's necessary to restructure the programmatic since the institutions, many manage them according to their structure, uh, the programmatic, the, the, and according to their structure, uh, organizational structure, and others according to their competencies and to their functions. The training and specialized uh, training for the public uh, officials or public employees, which was uh, the elaboration of tools that would allow to integrating the gender perspective in the public uh, office. The linking of costing, linking of costing to the exercise of planning and budgeting, and we have uh, defined uh, to have a pilot program with three uh, government uh, secretaries or divisions to work on a POA a project with the project for 2013, stemming from those uh, costing actions on that second program. The identification of possible financial sourcing is a pending issue, which has to be readdressed from the institutions that uh, in the budget sector. And we have presented the resulting of the cost and the cooperating to be able to have an incidence in the priorities with the different secretaries of the government. What was the use of the information which was generated? It helped us to do get them with uh, three categories that were costed. And the second three, the proposal of change, the guidelines of the budget, the creation of a proposal of classificator and a final function of gender, which is pending, and uh, and to have an incidence in the secretary of finance to be incorporated in the integrated management financial system, financial management system, and to elaboration of a 2013 to 2022, which will allow to the cross gender and the fulfillment of the second program. The facilitating uh, parts of the process. To have a previous analysis to be able to uh, address the, the, the directors of the budgeting, elaborate institutionally and validate a critical route to be able to address the gender sensitive budgets, to be able to have a policy of equality and equity. Uh, approved by the uh, Department of Honduras to have a framework for national plan to the development that has a orienting principle, the gender equality, to have the signature of a cooperation agreement between the guiding uh, the interinstitutional uh, the 
and the cooperation, which has been relevant, and the elaboration of a costing tool, uh, the f uh, limiting factors. We don't have minimum uh, and uh, minimum maximum ceilings, which made it difficult. Uh, to uh, to some projects that you pick for the of certain institutions, public institutions, and the strategy for its uh, deal to increase the remission to all the public institutions signed by the highest political level, the Ministry of Planning, and to be able to destine greater budgets to uh, for the second step, the strengthening of capacities and uh, to have a greater follow-up to each one of the institutions in the process of planning and budgeting uh, by the Women's uh, uh, National Institute and the strategy for implementation of the investment index in gender equality for the application in three institutions, uh, pilot programs. The lessons learned. The need to define strategies of incidents in the medium term and long term and gender sensitive budgets to be able to, that the Congress, uh, that the Ministry Council can empower these teams and they and the President of the country can also give clear directives regarding the need. Uh, to uh, gender sensitive uh, budgeting and the planning. To understand the costing principles within a more extensive project, which is uh, the budgeting and planning, and to be able to motivate the institutions between the main uh, institutions in order to be able to move forward in this process, in order to be able to have that the planning and in the systems of financial information can be incorporated and criteria. Uh, gender uh, to work with the uh, uh, ceilings and the budgets in order to be able to have a, a, a more uh, real figure as far as costing our future challenges is sustainability of the initiative by political juncture. We are in an uh, electorate year. Next year we will have uh, new methodologies and the change of new authorities makes uh, the processes uh, go backwards. Nevertheless, we want to have an incident so we can have the uh, sustainability of this process. The participation of civil society is important and to integrate uh, in the feminist movement in order to be able to have an incident in the planning and budgeting and to be able to have changes in the, the norm and legislation and also the budgeting and the general the position of the budget to be able to incorporate the gender perspective and to also be able to incorporate the index of investment of gender investment and also in the reports that are given by the uh, institutions so they really provide uh, an intent of the resources that are being invested in gender equality and also the generation of information uh, gender driven and the nice to be able to prioritize the the, the country not and planning has 71 indicators there's an indicator that of gender equality, which is specifically is related with gender, and all of the other indicators are not broken down by gender, but we need to include indicators of gaps of inequality in each one of the rights in order to be able to establish the, the real necessities and the institutions can incorporate to be able to uh, shorten that gap. Muchas gracias. So now I'd like to open this uh, session for the discussion, comments and clarifications for seven minutes because we have eight minutes. I want to keep one minute at the end. Thank you. Gracias. The effort Honduras in this so very complicated process. I would like to please, uh, if uh, the, an issue that you have touched, 
You have carried out a work in according to what was presented of the analysis, gender analysis in the planning process and budgeting and in the information system. How have you done this work? What indicators have you shown? What methodology have you used in order to be able to make this analysis? Please, if you could uh, give us a little bit more detail regarding this. Uh, yes, it was uh, necessary in order to be able to begin the, the costing process to see the conditions that we had in uh, the budgeting and planning process, which included the integrated uh, of the financial uh, administration and the planning system that is managed by the Secretariat of uh, Planning and Foreign uh, Aid. So what we did is make a, an analysis of the whole process that takes us to the formulation of the process all of the steps that uh, lead us to the making the general budget and the conditions that we had in order to be able to attain incorporating some uh, gender elements also in the planning aspect and the country vision and uh, we also uh, realize that there are conditions uh, in the, the administration system, a uh, financial administration, in order to be able to make a headway, to be able to incorporate certain elements, uh, gender elements. For example, the uh, indicator for uh, gender investment is an important element which we have to incorporate as a functional, according to the scheme of the categories of the financial classifications. And we also have incidents in the formats, of the budgeting formats and the elaboration of budgets where we can establish the, uh, the function for each one of the, uh, of the programs and the programs and projects and in to incorporate uh, the f uh, gender issue and also to see the formats and to include the function analysis, but also in the activities, specific activities, which are So that's uh, what we did of the process of uh, budgeting, of the norming uh, structure of the documents, the formats that uh, we use for to elaborate the budget, and also the process of planning of uh, the institution that uh, is the that leads that project was the technical the secretariat of planning and cooperation external cooperation which uh, certifies the institutions before they're incorporated into the financial administration before they pass into the budgeting so we have to do this uh, work in order to be able to, in the end, they're the ones that certify that uh, we also saw that the uh, program that were, we saw the problems that were in. It was uh, important to establish and restructure, not the, uh, the program uh, structures, but rather the institutions really be able to be, have visible within the categories, the specific actions that can be carried out in order to be advanced in the fulfillment of the second plan for gender equality. Certain institutions, their categories and the programs, which are programs and sub-programs, projects and activities. The activities many times are on the function of the orga organic structure and not on the functions that they have to carry out. So it is necessary to have an incidence in these institutions planning institutions in order to be able to have a sort of a restructuring of the uh, framework with which the institutions work and those categories that are programmed. I don't know if that answers your questions. Good morning. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate Honduras for all of the advancements that it has made as far as uh, the costing issue. My question is the following. 
I would like for you to talk to me a little bit more in detail as to what the costing exercise is about, because from yesterday I keep on hearing this issue of costing exercise and costing exercise, but nobody has been able to clarify to me what this exercise consists in, because I have it very clear in what you tell me that how the budgets are, the structure of expenditures, there's classificators, yes, uh, the, the programs we have, your, your, your functions. I think all of us here, we all relate to that, or we know about this, or we're kind of clear on that. Why my question? Because I want to be able to see how am I going to be able to link the costing exercise with uh, the elaboration of the budgets. How am I, at, at what point in time, are going to be able to link to, to inter, uh, interact those two things uh, in a simple language? Costing is establishing the, uh, the value of a good or service. So please, with the experience of Honduras, and uh, you can tell me what the costing is. Like you said, the concept is simple. <laughs> to value the goods and services that the government is investing in gender equality and uh, through, through what? Through its policies, through its programs and its projects and activities. That is the definition of costing. But how, how do we link that? put this gender equality uh, we take as a reference our second plan for gender equality what are the specific strategic objectives that each one of the institutions have to comply with that they have to be incorporated to that planning process the problematic has to be categorized as we mentioned there are their programs programs sub programs projects and activities but uh, in reality the institutions are incorporating the strategic objectives of the public policy, public gender policy, within that planning, operational planning. That is to say, we're, they're designating resources in order to be able to advance in the elimination of discrimination towards women and the advancement of the quality of women, uh, the life of, of women. So it's to link that public policy. This is how do we link that? Uh, Plan, operational planning and that the institutions can identify which are the actions that they can do within their competencies and incorporate them as an activity within their operational plan. As an example, we, in the, in the work that was developed in number one, which is the part participation and the exercise of citizenship, we had 20 people that participated of the different uh, linking dependencies to the fulfillment of those uh, strategic objectives that we have the second plan. Amongst them, we have the Secretary of Development, uh, the Secretary of uh, the, the Interior. So each one of the secretariats, uh, they defined projects and uh, actions that they had to put in their budget. And the training for the etc. of the, the city of women, to the network of, uh, of uh, policy participation, to be able to the empowerment of women in order to have their participation in the planning of the development and empowerment of women. That is a program, it's a project that was selected that should have been costed. It was costed out and what was that was needed for that empowerment of women in order to be able to have that uh, participation in the processes of development that began from their participation. And now Honduras has as a regional of the development where the planning stems and the national, how is it that women get incorporated within that planning and how should, what should the state do for the empowerment of these women? And that is how they can participate with proposals to be able to attain the development of their communities. So I don't know with this example, I can, I answered your question. 
I really, that's what this is about, that the institutions, uh, the governmental institutions, which are in charge of fulfilling the human rights uh, for women, incorporate specific actions in their planning and to assign resources for those actions so that they can be uh, moved towards uh, uh, closing the gaps that we have in our countries. Just uh, very quickly, I think that there's been a problem in the translation. Uh, I have comments in the translation of the last two slides. So just to say that uh, in the CD that the organization is going to provide, the presentation is English. And for our colleague where you mentioned regarding the question about the analysis of the budget and the information system, to tell you that that is also in the folder of information for Honduras. And then we have also shared the analysis as well as the critical route. It's in Spanish, but for you, that'll be a good thing. I would like to thank the members of the panel. My question would be the following. I would like to know what are the activities that have been developed and which is the role that civil society has in terms of methodology because we all know that the direct beneficiaries, uh, what is the role that uh, the civil society se uh, cortó? Uh, as I was commenting in the presentation, one of the main challenges that we have in this process is incorporating the civil society because it has, uh, has been a little bit divorced of what the state is, particularly the feminist groups. But there have been experiences, we've had some experiences where civil society has incorporated and it's in the, the budgets in a municipality in the western part of our country, which is Santa Rosa de Copan, where civil society has had a, a preponderant role in as far as uh, gen budgeting that is gender sensitive, where UN Women was also supporting that process. But it is necessary and it's a challenge for us that civil society can be incorporated into, into these programs and these issues. I don't know if to do it through the National Women's Institute, because for us it's very difficult to create that linkage, but to make it through the cooperation and through other organizations that are interested in, the, in this issue. But yeah, I do consider that civil society is relevant, and we have to make that effort to be able to incorporate them into this process. Muchísimas gracias. Una última pregunta. Bien cortita. La última. From Nicaragua. Because as I was saying yesterday, it's not that there's uh, one uh, specific formula of doing a costing. I think today's uh, has been very uh, provided us with a wealth of information on those different focuses, uh, those different uh, approaches from Kyrgyzstan that, that get close to with a equality plan where they define and they cost out the goals, the priorities, the tasks, while in Honduras, they look at what is uh, in the budget, they look at what programs are already existing, and they see how they contribute to the plan, and those are the programs that they cost out, and they're the ones that uh, contribute to the plan. That is to say, they are approximately different approaches, uh, different uh, uh, focus, different approaches, but they're just, they, their aim is the same, but they just have different ways of reaching the same goal. Muchísimas gracias. Tenemos... on this uh, uh, costing national plan of actions on gender equality. Uh, I would just like to mention a uh, few, few words on this. Since the CETA adaptation by the United Nations and the other countries, we have been struggling for finding out the resources, adequate resources for the gender equality. And this is a kind of exercise we have come through from the different stages. 
Like after CETA, we had a Beijing plus 12, identified 12 critical areas of actions, still not resources. Then one of the, uh, the main recommendation was to find out the resources. Then there was a, there was a Paris Declaration for the Aid Effectiveness to engage dialogue mechanism between the government, development partners, and the civil society, but not adequate resources for the gender equality. Again, we went to the Bhushan, and the, the all of this exercise is meant to generate more resources to address the gender equality. When we saw the Kyrgyz presentations, the 89% of required budget is un unfunded. So that is the area that uh, everybody, the, the donors, civil society and government can work together to generate how to how to generate those resources to 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 eliminate these uh, discriminations or empowering women or gender equality i think these two two presentations are very nice and can can be replicated or even we can we can take some of the some of the uh, techniques uh, in our country context i thank you very much for the presenters and uh, the the audience for your passions thank you very much Así concluimos la primera sesión de la mañana. Nos vamos por favor al break por este lado, por la. Thank you very much.